What is going on, everybody? I hope you're doing amazingly well. I'm sure you'll all be happy to know I feel a hell of a lot better today. I think it is day five um, of COVID. Um, it, uh, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And look, don't get me wrong, you know, I could suddenly go downhill. But, you know, it was just like a bad cold for me. And I think my uh, my healthy uh, eating and all that kind of stuff was uh, definitely a factor in in my speedy recovery. But thank you so much for all the people who you know messaged me and and supported me. And you know, I just I really appreciate it, guys that you know the love that I get from you guys is is unreal. So I thought, why not bash out another video, get back on the schedule, and uh, you know treat you guys in return. So in today's video, as the title may have given away, it may not have given away. Um, I am going to be talking about a specific tactic, how, you know, basically using a um, retail level can just help you pinpoint exactly where and where not to get in and just can help basically filter out some of those bad setups from those good setups. And this is a tool that I use. It's very, very simple. It's very, very effective. So I highly recommend that you stick around till the end of this video. I will try not to make it too long as always. They're always normally under, you know, 15 minutes tops, normally 10 minutes. But obviously you can see how long this video takes by just going and looking on the little, you know, um, timeline thing. I don't know what you'd call it, the, the, the playback tracker. I don't know, whatever it's called. Um, so yeah, so stick around to the end of the video. But first of all, if you are new here, uh, welcome first and foremost. And if you enjoy content like this, I'd appreciate if you smash that like button for me. And if you want to see more like this, then consider subscribing to the channel. Also, if you want to go and check out our amazing community, learn about all of the things that go into trading from the uh, in-depth strategy, really, really broken down step by step A to Z, plus all of the important things like psychology, how do you stop making all those mistakes, all of that fun stuff tracking all of that sort of stuff then i highly recommend checking out the link in the description to learn more but without further ado let's get into it so when we are monitoring for setups okay let me just move this over here um so it's always broken down into our three-step formula okay we've got directional bias we've got our area of interest we have our entry trigger okay so when we have this and we've got our direction down, okay, I'm not going to talk about direction in this video, okay, so that could be done from anything from, you know, even something like a fib, for example, okay, this would be conservative structure, alternatively, it would be aggressive structure on the daily, again, I've got other videos if that doesn't make sense to you, but nevertheless, okay. Now, once you've got that ticked off, okay, so we've got directional bias, we can give it a big old tick, okay? The next thing that we're going to be doing is we are going to be looking at the area of interest, okay? Now, in this example, if we're using the FIB as, you know, part of the, I guess you could call it solution, uh, and let's just say we were using a simple, you know, supply level, for example, so something like this. So this level would make sense to us because it lines up with, at least the top of it lines up with the um, 618 on the FIB, okay? And this is not to illustrate strategy, this video. This is just to give you a little bit of an idea of essentially confluence, okay? Now, ahead of time, okay, it's all very well and good having this, or maybe you didn't even have the FIB, you know, it's, always, it's a little bit complicated. It can sometimes be a little bit confusing. Now, what I want, what I would do here, okay, is I'm just going to mark out two lines for you, okay? Uh, let's just go here, okay? So I'm just going to get rid of the fib temporarily here. Now, what and why have I marked out these two lines? Well, if we think about what these two lines are and we go back in time to here, okay? In fact, let's first of all go back in time to here. What do you think most people are going to be doing at this level? Well, I can imagine that most people would be doing something along the lines of this, okay? Because if we think about it, we see very clear bearish break of structure. You've got to remember, everybody can see this bearish break of structure. It's not just you that can see it. Everybody can see it, okay? Combined with the fact that we come up, we print a much smaller candle, a rejection candle, followed by a bearish engulfing candle. Now, to most people, they're going to think, wow, this is a selling opportunity. Now, am I saying that that's straight up wrong? You know, a lot of people uh, in the quote unquote institutional space, which by the way, 
as a term I don't really like anyway I know I use it in some videos but you know institutional trading is not black and white and it's definitely um you know it's not as overcomplicated as it needs to be and there's so many different types but anyway that's a whole another topic okay but you've got to bear in mind that just because I am saying that this doesn't fit in with what I'm saying right now doesn't mean that it's necessarily wrong to another strategy there are loads of different strategies that works uh that work sorry and um it's it's just basically doesn't really matter so this could be part of someone's strategy and over 100 trades it could work out for them that's absolutely fine i'm not saying it does or it doesn't work i'm just saying within the context of what i'm doing here i have found this to be a lot more effective so little disclaimer there okay so let me just move this over here okay so as we know price ends up coming and stopping us out now when we have a sell position, this stop loss here comes in the form of a buy stop, okay? Because in order to reverse a position in the market, because of the fact that we have got pairs, Forex pairs come in pairs, okay? Because of this, okay, we can't stop one out without another one being triggered in. So in other words, we can't buy one without selling another. We can't buy GBP without selling USD simultaneously in this pair. And we can't sell USD without buying GBP. And so in order to reverse a sell position, which we had here with a stop loss, we are reversing it with a buy stop position. Now, you don't see that in your account. It doesn't reflect in your balance because it's not part of your position, okay? But nevertheless, those buy orders are in the market. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. So when you get a stop loss here, that is an increase in buyers into the market. Okay, so let's just continue going with this logic uh, quickly and we will see um, what happens. Okay, so interesting. So right here, we've come up to this level. This was the wick level created over here, or maybe it's clearer on a lower time frame, and people are seeing this level as the level that potentially could be you know, price could potentially be turning around now. Okay, now it looks good. You know, they're thinking great, you know, sweet. We've had another rejection candle. Oh, okay, I may have got it wrong before. Maybe they missed it entirely before. Now this looks good to me. Okay, maybe they bash this on here. Okay, and again, they're thinking, okay, cool. Like I just was a little bit late last time. Now I can take it either to the bottom of this level down here or maybe even the lows down here, for example. Okay. Now they're thinking, great, okay, it's starting to go in my direction, thank God, and then, oh, what happened here, okay? This is so, so common, this happens to all traders, this happens to me, even with what I'm te teaching you now, it's not just never going to happen to you again, this is just the nature of trading, it's going to happen but the question is, is can you reduce the amount of times that it happens, okay, can you optimize, okay? So again, if we combine these two understandings here, okay, over here, we had a stop loss, which leads to an increase in buyers. So I'm going to reference that with this green arrow right here. Okay, so we get an increase in buyers over here. Now, as we get these two increases in buyers coming into the market, okay, what does that allow institutions to do? Okay, well, if you've seen multiple of my other videos where I talk about liquidity, Okay, just draw a random chart. So this is just a random load of charts here. Unlike us retail traders, where we can buy and sell wherever we see fit, we can buy, sell here, 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 you know, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. Unlike that, institutions cannot do that, okay? The larger flows of money, which are required to push price in any particular direction, even if it's just a little bit, okay? Then we are going to need, they're going to need, so they need, number one, they need buyers to sell to. So if they're going to sell, they need enough buyers in the market to sell to. Or on the flip side, they need sellers to buy from. Okay, in the same way as if you went to a supermarket, okay, you can't buy something if no one's selling it. And you can't sell something if no one's willing to buy it. Okay, it's the exact same thing here. And so when we pair this understanding of seeing that we've had two stop losses leading to an increase increase in buyers in our directional bias being down. So we've got a bearish directional bias, meaning we anticipate prices are going to go lower. Now, in order for prices to go lower, they're going to need, need to be, um, you know, larger flows of money are going to need to sell price. Okay. Now, if we then understand that in order for them to sell, okay, they need buyers to sell to. And then we understand that these stop losses are increasing the amount of buyers in the market. Okay. Then what does this mean? That there is an 
uh, that the institutions are more likely, remember not guaranteed, more likely to do, it means they are more likely to be able to sell and accumulate their sell positions, okay? Then if we look at this level, we also notice that this level is, hasn't been touched whatsoever, whereas this level was second touch, second touch here, okay? Which again fits in the rules, Psychofex Academy members, you know exactly what I'm talking about here, okay? Right over here, very, very simple. Price comes down, price comes all the way up like this, and then it provides us with a decent opportunity, okay, right here, okay. Now, even though this was a small opportunity, whether it continues going down, it doesn't really matter, okay, whether it continues going down to these low points down here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, it doesn't matter, because the fact is, is it came to our first one, which means that if risk management is on point, that should be enough to get to break even, okay, and again, our job is to manage risk, it's not to, you know, just have this linear risk reward that just, in my opinion anyway, that just, you know, either gets hit or doesn't. Again, I used to trade like that. However, now I like to just manage my risk according to the levels the price is at. Um, and yeah, as simple as that. Okay. But just by having this, by being able to see where this is in the frame of the setup, if we were to draw this out like this, for example. Okay. No, I've already screwed that up. <laughs> Um, so like this, like this. Okay. Now I didn't draw any little small bumps here. I made the same mistake twice, but just for example, having something like this, we know that most people are going to continue. They're going to be excited to continue selling off here. They're going to be excited to continue selling off here, which means there's going to be you know, increases in buyers if we go ahead here, because you're going to have stop loss orders, you're also going to have people doing buy breakouts, you see this is market structure breaking, which then allows us to get involved in this move right here. Okay, and it's really, really very simple, but it's a very, very effective tool and one that I absolutely love to use. Okay, now this is a very picture perfect example. It's not always going to look like this. Okay, and that's okay. You know, it's not the end of the world that, you know, it's not always going to look like that. Okay, it's just a question of um, perspective. Okay, so right here, for example, this would be our bias level in this example. Okay, because this is a more at least with conservative structure approach, or you could have it down here if you're really conservative, but just to make this example a little bit better. And then if we look here, okay, we've got this level right here. Uh, it's not actually that obvious. We do have a little bit, a little bit of a level right there. Um, da, 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 da. Sometimes in scenarios like this, going down a time frame. Yeah, so it's not the most obvious of time frames. It's arguable um, how it would have been you know, structured here, but we can see this pattern plays out a lot. Price will dip below for liquidity below these areas. And whilst everybody's getting in here, you can understand that price will most often manipulate two, uh, two untested levels below, which it has done in this case. Let's just move that bias level and see right here down to this demand zone. Very, very simple. Okay. Everybody's buying here. They'll have their stops below the level. They get stopped out. We move on, etc., etc., etc. It's very, very simple, guys. Okay, it's not complicated. It doesn't have to be complicated. Okay, I see one of the most common mistakes. Is everyone overcomplicates everything, and uh, you know, I just don't think that's you know necessary. But I've got loads of videos on overcoming confusion and over you know analysis paralysis and all this kind of stuff. So highly recommend going and checking those out. But in the meantime, guys, I really, really hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's given you a little bit of perspective. I've tried to keep it short i'm pretty sure i've kept it under 15 minutes i'm not going to try and do the maths because i don't want to embarrass myself in front of all of you guys but thank you again for all of the wishes for you know helping me get better during covid i really appreciate it go check out the psych effects academy if you want to learn more about this method all of the intricacies and details that go along with it all of the back testing all of that stuff then I highly recommend checking that out. But guys, thank you so much. If you've got any questions whatsoever, or if you just want to have a go at me or whatever it is, then I will appreciate it. And uh, I'll read all the comments. I try to reply to most of you um, as fast as possible. Okay, so thank you again. And I'll see you very, very soon.